Hey, everybody. Jesse Dollimore here, host of the non-award winning podcast, I Doubt It With Dollimore. Listen, there's something that I want to address. And actually, <laughs> this isn't going to work. This is stupid. Well, here we are once again, folks. This is going to be part two of my who knows how many part series on the unabashed ramblings of Christian Josh Feuerstein. This time, he's at it again, attacking a father who posted a video to his Facebook page, which explains that he allowed his son to pick out any toy that the child wanted. The little kid chose a Little Mermaid doll. It should be the end of the story, right? Well, it would have been the end of the story if it hadn't been for the backward-hatted vertical iPhone video taker, Josh Feuerstein. Ugh. So, without further delay, let's get into the dismantling of his latest hateful and irrational rant. So there's an article that's going viral, a picture of a dad that went to Walmart, took back one of his son's toys that he had gotten for his birthday that he didn't care for, and he let his t son go back to the toy department and choose whatever toy he wanted to, only for his little boy to pick out a little girl's toy, a little mermaid doll. Little girl's toy? How is a little mermaid doll a girl's toy? Merely making a baseless claim doesn't make it so, Josh. Why do you say that Ariel is a girl's toy? And, well, the dad says, I'm going to let you choose. And everybody's loving this dad in the picture that he posted to Facebook because he's letting his son choose and express who he really wants to be. Really? Since when do kids make good choices? We live in this society that thinks that kids are supposed to make choices like that and that we're not supposed to choose for them. We're supposed to let them express themselves. Kids make choices like that? Choices like what, Josh? Do you really believe that which toy a child chooses to play with is akin to something dangerous? Are you really that worried about your children's decision-making to think that they're in danger if they play with dolls or don't play with dolls? Seriously, since when do kids make good choices? If you give a kid a choice between playing in the yard or playing in the street, if he picks the street, are you just going to say, sure, go out there, just have a good time? Playing in the street, it's the Little Mermaid. It's not a busy highway. If you give a, a, a kid a choice, he's probably going to choose candy over peas and carrots. It doesn't mean it's what's good for him. Good for him? Again, why would playing with a doll be bad in any way? That's why the Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. Why? Because kids need to know that it's not just filling, son. What's one plus one? Well, maybe he doesn't say two. Maybe he says, uh, 83. Well, does it feel like 83 to you? Because if 83 is how you express yourself, no. I'm going to tell him the truth. One plus one is two. Why? Because then he's going to grow up just learn, not even learn, learning how to use math. How did we get from the wild dangers of the Little Mermaid to mathematics? So me, I train up a boy in the way that he should go by teaching him how to use a firearm, teaching him how to use a gun and proper gun safety. See, my son Samuel, he's learning today as we're in the backyard. Yikes, that escalated real quick. And also, for the record, a firearm is defined as a small arms weapon, as a rifle or pistol, from which a projectile is fired by gunpowder. What you're holding is not a firearm, it's a plastic toy. And guess what? For all of you liberal, spineless, no good, coward kind of people, since you want to be gen gender neutral, guess who else I'm teaching you to use a gun? My daughters. They're learning how to use a gun. Liberals, spineless, no good, coward. This amazes me. Aren't you someone who's supposed to be a shining example of Christ's love for not only the world, but for at least those innocent children on your lap and in your presence? I wonder what your Bible has to say about this. How about Ephesians 4.29? Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such as a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. What part of spineless, coward, and no good is wholesome or leads to edification? And how at all will those words give grace, God's grace, to those who hear them? So Samuel, take that gun right there. You know how to hold it. And why don't you go ahead and hit that target right there and fire. Hit it? Yeah, good. That's gun control, ladies and gentlemen. That's gun control. A boy that knows how to properly fire a gun. I'm going to teach my daughter, too. 
That's for you, guy who has no cojones, who needs to grow a pair and be a dad and train a child. I would really like to know why and at whom you were so angry, Josh. What happened to you in your past that has caused you to be so fearful, bitter, angry, and resentful toward your fellow man? And between you and me, why are you talking about another man's genitals with your kids sitting in your lap? Listen, Josh. Unless you're putting on this wacky persona as the ultimate gag, or you're just trying to earn the award for the universe's biggest troll, you should consider what Christian example you're setting. It may be cliche to ask, but what would Jesus do? Does anybody buy that Jesus was a gun-toting, name-calling lunatic? Anyway, this is the part of the video where I normally ask people to subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel, but I will leave that honor to none other than Josh. Anyways, God bless you guys. Have a great day. If you agree with me, would you take a moment and click share on the side of the bottom of this video, like and comment below. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name at the top of the video. Let's be friends. We teach good family values around here, not that sissy stuff that you read on the liberal news media. God bless. Have a great day. Click share if you care.